Beloved, welcome back. This here is a Western crosscut saw, a bucking saw in six foot. These are considered to, by me and by many people who know a national treasure for the reason that they are, they're irreplaceable. They cannot be reproduced. When the power saw came in, it pretty much put these out of business and the great big machinery that was able to crescent grind these was de decommissioned and it's, it's long since gone. If you ever come across these, please save them because once they're gone, they're gone and they'll never be able to be replaced. What makes them unique is several different things, but the most important is the way that they were ground. We have a tool here that had to work with the human body. It was powered by men. It had to be efficient. It had to be, everything had to be just right because you didn't have the ability to have an engine that could just power through or muscle things. It was required two guys to go back and forth all day long. The way they were ground is interesting. They would take the stock material, the flat steel, and they would run it out on a table and it would be sucked down and held down securely by an electromagnet. And there was a massive stone that ran on a crescent. And what that did is it changed the thickness across the whole thing. The thinnest part of the saw is on the back of the spine right here at the waist. And it starts to taper thicker and thicker towards the handles. Also, the same time, thicker and thicker towards the rakers and the teeth. The reason for that is the back is thin so it doesn't get caught in the kerf. The kerf, when you cut with a skill saw or a chainsaw, the gap that is made is called the kerf. And the thinner this could be, the less wood you had to cut. Therefore, the less set you had to have in the teeth. Whenever you have a saw, you can't just have teeth sticking straight up. They need to alternate like this. It's called the set. And the reason being, if the teeth are not set properly, the saw will bind in the kerf and you end up pulling against all that friction. When you have a crescent ground saw like this, it's very laser thin on the back. Therefore, the kerf can be very small, meaning the set can be very small. So what you, ha what you have is like a, a metal laser beam that is cutting a very, very tiny bit of wood, therefore making it a lot easier for the user. You will see modern crosscut saws for sale today, but they're just punched out of uh, bandsaw stock. They don't have the ability to do that crescent ground, and they're not, they really can't be compared. Two styles of these that you'll run into is the, is the bucking and the felling. If you see one with a flat spine like this one here, meaning the back of it is completely straight, that was designed for bucking, meaning cutting something into rounds that was on the ground. If you see one like this that has a concave in it, that was a felling saw, usually a little bit lighter weight and thinner, and that was used for actually the felling of timber. The handles are interesting. These are also very rare. If you ever come across one, please do save it. This one is a very special. This is an Atkins 24 original. You can see the stamp right there. And it's made up of a retained pin and a hand guard and the nut. And how they would work is that you would carry this to the stand and then you would install it here in these two holes. There's two, there's a, there's a low setting and a high setting depending on how you wanted to trim the saw and what you were doing, how much pressure you wanted to exert on the teeth. But to install these is quite simple. You line up the pin and you push this through and then you orient the handle whichever way you want. Sometimes it would be appropriate to go sideways like this, but usually it was done like this. The guard would be moved down and this was to protect the hand. Those teeth are very sharp and you don't want to get your hand caught on them. So you can see this was a protect way to protect it. It's very rare to find these hand guards still intact because they were made out of, they were cast and they're a little bit fragile. It's also very common on the Western saws that you'll see this leading tooth right here is missing or broken off like it is on this beautiful example right here. This was done on purpose that in the event that your hand did slip on this without the guard, it was less likely to tear your hand up. You would tighten up the, the nut, there would be a handle on both sides, and this would be usually operated by two people. A short saw like this, a six footer, uh, could easily be used by one person uh, for cutting firewood and such. But that is the original, the real deal right there, and quite a nice specimen. Maple handle, 
very precious. That's kind of why these old vintage saws uh, are considered by me certainly as a national treasure. Still used today by the Forest Service in the wilderness areas where it's illegal to use power saws, these are very relevant. Uh, and the, the thing that's very interesting to me about it is people will look at them and say, well, this is no longer of any value. This is a thing of the past, but here we are still able to use them. They're still functioning as well as they ever did. Where is your power saw gonna be in 100 years? Is anyone gonna be talking about it? So if you ever come across one, please do save it because they are very special indeed. Thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. And we'll see you guys on the next video.